Our next presentation is by Nicola Simpson of UNDP Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean Accelerator Lab. Hello from Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. My name is Nicola Simpson and I am currently the resident explorer at the United Nations Development Program, UNDP's Accelerator Lab in Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. And today I'd like to invite you to join me as we travel to Barbados to take a deep dive to experience some of the work that we have collaborated on, which is utilizing artificial intelligence for a digital blue planet, and more specifically looking at AI from the lens of revolutionizing access to marine data in the Eastern Caribbean region. These images are reflective of the sad reality of the headlines of today, the multitude of crises facing our ocean, from climate change to natural hazards, we're experiencing more intense and frequent storms and hurricanes, volcanic eruptions, to land-based sources of pollution, such as agricultural runoff and plastic pollution, to unsustainable coastal development. The challenges are many. However, there is hope, and this is where the Accelerator Lab Network, which comprises of 91 labs in 115 countries around the world, comes in because we are experimenting and testing to learn what works and what does not in order to achieve sustainable development faster. In Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, due to national and regional interest and commitment in the blue economy, we chose this area of work to focus on. And at the lab, when we speak about the blue economy, we are looking at the ocean as an opportunity for economic diversification, for job creation, for livelihoods, but also for environmental sustainability, ocean health, and building resilience to external shocks, such as the climate crisis. We work primarily in a few key sectors of the blue economy, such as fisheries, waste management, renewable energy, sustainable, or what we're now calling responsible tourism, as well as marine conservation and restoration. Just like other colors of the economy and other types of the economy, such as the green economy and the circular economy, we see the blue economy as a concept which acts as a pathway to achieve sustainable development with positive economic, environmental and social impacts, which are good for people, planet and prosperity. At our lab in Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, we've been working on data and digital a lot. And as such, I would like you to meet Antonio, who is an innovator from Beijing Digital Creations that we have been collaborating with. And with his permission and those of his team, I am going to be sharing one innovation that we have worked on. So our proposed solution is BlueBot, which uses robotics, artificial intelligence and deep machine learning for access to marine data. And this pilot in Barbados is the first, and if not the first, one of the first in the Caribbean with an active AI monitoring system for our reefs. And what is also really important about this is the digitalization of marine data, which is giving individuals and communities a voice. I am a firm believer that we need to marry both traditional and cultural knowledge with science to inform and drive innovation from a grassroots level so that there is a community to cabinet approach in everything that we do. In terms of BlueBot and a, a bit more on the process, I wish to invite you to join me to see how we collect data. Here we are deploying the underwater robot SARA at a West Coast location in Barbados. And now uh, piloting the robot and you will you will soon see the robot swimming and diving through the water and as you can see unfortunately the health of some of our reefs is, is suffering not looking too good and in in Barbados specifically 75 percent of our island's fringing reefs which are the near shore reefs are in, in very poor condition according to the most recent reef scorecard by the Coastal Zone Management Unit in the Ministry of Maritime Affairs and the Blue Economy and the Center for Resource Management and Environmental Studies, CIRM, at the University of the West Indies Cave Hill. So 
what we're hoping to do with Bluebot is collect data more quickly with even more accuracy. And where there cannot be human assistance to collect data, this bot can come in to do remote surveying. So now uh, moving along to share a little bit more with you on, on how this, this process works overall and in relatively simple terms, it uses robots in combination with deep machine learning and artificial intelligence to collect video data, which is then used to generate open data sets. So using this clip as an example, this data is being collected by the robot and this small sample of video content can then be analyzed by Beijing Digital Creations proprietary AI called Scylla. And Scylla is an AI tool that uses specially trained neural networks, as well as statistical methods to analyze and compute numerical repelt metrics. Okay, so continuing a bit more on, on, our, on our journey, and um, now you know a bit more about the AI, the deep machine learning. So what this image shows, or these two images rather show, are two visuals taken by the robot, and below shows two open data sets for time and for parrotfish. And this could be used, for example, to support governments in, in decision making. Um, it's really helping to tackle many challenges and you know maybe this could show, okay, this is what we're seeing. We have a baseline, we can compare this to 50 years ago. This is what the reef looked like. This is what we predict the reefs will look like in 50 years as, as they continue to experience many shocks such as the climate crisis. And, and this may be the best location for a marine managed or a, a marine protected area for example. In terms of developing this work in the future, we're already seeing uh, the vast potential of applications, for example, in post-disaster assessment from natural hazards. In this case, you can see this visual here, which is uh, very high turbidity, maybe caused by the ash post, uh, 14 days post ash fall in Barbados. And over here, you can see, based on the visual data collected by the underwater robot, and in combination with the AI and deep machine learning, this graph that was um, created, which essentially shows a, a reef metric of a specific number, which was indicative that there was no uh, impact of the ash fall from La Soufrière volcanic eruption in St. Vincent on this specific reef location in Barbados. So, as I said, this is just one uh, potential application, but we're also seeing a lot of interest in using this for virtual reality, for entertainment, for research, for meditation, for example. So really, you know, we're excited that this innovation is collecting uh, very accurate data very quickly and could potentially lead to the democratization of underwater data and information, which really leads into how we at the lab are using BlueBot uh, for our Blue Digital experiment, which is a four portal uh, ecosystem, which caters to four key different groups of stakeholders, fisher folk in blue fish, government in blue data, um, individual consumers in, in blue trace and the private sector, tourism sector in, in blue seal. And we hope that this Caribbean asset pool for, for marine conservation and restoration is just one little beginning step of, of what this can do and how artificial intelligence for a digital blue planet can empower individuals and communities who are you know, living this every day and being impacted to have a greater voice and to inform decision making. You know, we're sharing and exchanging knowledge and skills to be able to access this digital blue planet and digital twins uh, to really revolutionize access to marine data in the Eastern Caribbean region. So as we continue to scale this throughout the Eastern Caribbean region and also in parallel to small island developing state SIDS, we hope that you will continue to join us on our journey 
as we learn more about artificial intelligence for a digital new planet. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks so much, Nicola, for your presentation. Some really interesting uh, ideas you're exploring there with, um, especially I was interested in your um, creative ideas about using um, footage for med meditation um, and also learning tools as well. I think it's always, we can look at some very technical aspects, can't we? Uh, like identifying fish and things, but maybe there are people that don't have access to that, uh, that, that media or, or knowledge of the degradation that's going on on the reefs. Um, so uh, perhaps that's a very good tool for doing that. Um, I have a question for you, which is, um, um, what sort of stakeholder integration have you been doing with, with the Blue Box project um, so far? Sure, thanks. Uh, thanks, Matt, for, for your question and for including me in this. Um, I think so far what we've been doing is a big part of the Accelerator Lab in Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean is to work on the ground at the grassroots level. So we have been trying, um, with, with Bluebot specifically, trying to train individuals within the communities to actually be able to, to pilot the robot and learn how to analyze uh, some of the information. And then with regards to, to Fisher Folk and, and that group of stakeholders, we've also been engaging uh, with many of them to support identification of some of the fish species. Because as I started to mention in the one of the last slides, we're, we're using the information and the data collected um, to try to inform and, and train the algorithms to be able to identify fish species. But um, unlike some of the other presentations that we've heard earlier today, there's actually the, a huge challenge of data collection within the Eastern Caribbean region. So we actually don't have a, a huge quantity of data being collected uh, within this region on, on specific elements. So we are trying to collaborate with the fisher folk to collect more data specifically on, on some of the, the fish species. And then we are collaborating, as I said, with many different innovators to try to um, analyze some of this information and to look at the applications of it. You know, as you touched on, uh, there, there are so many opportunities um, and applications of, of this innovation. As, as I said, and we're seeing it in research, you know, VR, a lot of um, tourism partners are interested in it, or even individuals, and then meditation, you know, you're having a hard day wherever you're sitting, you can um, just tune in and, and watch one of the videos of, of the robot diving in, in Carlisle Bay in Barbados, where there's seven sunken shipwrecks, for example. So lots of opportunities in trying to bring in everyone, because as I said, what we're really trying to do here is marry the, the traditional or cultural knowledge with the science to inform innovation. And we've realized that we can't really do one uh, without the other. Thank you very much, Nicola. Um, it just reminded me that FAO's uh, Fish Finder program is putting out a, an old style PDF um, guide later this year, which relies on the kind of old style of presenting information. And you've taken it right to the other end where you've got automated underwater vehicles collecting and analyzing data. So there's a lot happening and, and it's good to see that it's happening in the Caribbean region. Thank you very much.